The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day, a uh, Sunday that we mark our entry into the season of fall. And for us traditionally here at First Presbyterian, the Sunday that follows uh, Labor Day is, marks the beginning of our program year. We start up our Sunday schools and all of our ministries and missions that will continue on uh, through the month of May. The, for this worship service today, we are going to be celebrating Rally Day. Uh, later on, you will hear from all of our uh, coordinating teams and committees about the wonderful work uh, that goes on. So uh, I will leave that to later in the service. Our guest preacher for this morning is uh, Anne Gasteyer, the wife of our organist choir director, Eric Gasteyer. Anne has been studying uh, online through Union Seminary in Richmond, Virginia, studying theology and Old Testament, New Testament, and uh, various uh, seminary courses. So it's, uh, once again, we have the great joy of, of experiencing Anne's gifts to us. Our hymn for this morning will be sung by Elizabeth and Scott Perkins, and I'm certainly grateful that they are willing to share their talents. And now, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. The two composers of our organ music for this morning have many things in common. They were both born in Germany, they both had loyal followings in London, and they both composed many sacred works for chorus in church. The two are Felix Mendelssohn and George Frederick Handel. First of all, for the prelude, a slow movement out of the first organ sonata by Mendelssohn. The musical offering today is a slow movement out of a Handel organ concerto. During Handel's long uh, oratorios, like Messiah, for example, he would often insert uh, these organ concertos as little showpieces uh, for him to perform during the short intermissions. Finally, the postlude today uh, is a fugue. Last week we heard Bach's G minor fugue. This is a fugue by Mendelssohn 150 years later. Mendelssohn was a great admirer of Bach, and in fact, Mendelssohn gets a lot of credit for reinvigorating interest in Bach after it had lain fallow for many years. Thank you. Mm.
invite you to join me to our call to worship. Despite what the reality may be, God's hope, forgiveness, and renewal never fail. The God of hope empowers us. The depth of God's love calls us to forgive one another. The God of love encourages us. God's Spirit helps us to let go and to be refreshed and renewed through reconciliation. Come let us worship God whose love and grace forgive, renews, and heals. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you are here with us and in us. We discover you through those who listen to our loneliness and celebrate our happiness. We meet you when we share the anxious hours and triumph moments of others. We offer ourselves as grateful agents of your spirit and joyful channels of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please pray with me in our prayer of confession. God of patience and forgiveness, we come before you in a time of self-reflection. Cleanse our hearts, O God, for we come to be one with your holy presence. We name those times when we have held on to our grudges rather than letting them go. We name those times when we have wanted to seek vengeance rather than seek peace and reconciliation. We name those times when we let our anger get the best of our judgment and reason. We name those times when we resisted the call to walk in gentleness with your loving spirit. We name those times when we do not trust your wisdom and your caring. Help us to let go of all that stands between us, O loving God. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Spirit's presence is in us, between us, and embracing us always. Through the unity of this spirit, we are shaped into a community that lives to fulfill love's expectations. In the joy of the forgiven, let us live into that hope for ourselves and for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with We have come to that time in our worship today when we are going to celebrate Rally Day. And we will do that through a series of video clips highlighting our coordinating teams, our committees, uh, the work of our programmatic staff uh, as we move into the year. Uh, do note that these video clips will be available on our website uh, separate from the worship service. They will be under uh, their various uh, categories of ministry uh, that you will find on the website. So I invite you to enjoy, to remember, to find something that might interest you uh, to get involved in if you are here in our area or part of our congregation. So let us rally together. I'm Cheryl Gates, and I'm chair of the Faith and Nurture coordinating team. Faith and Nurture is a big umbrella for everything in our church life together pertaining to education, fellowship, and hospitality. Over the past year, we've supported Sunday school for all ages, all church events like the fifth Sunday potlucks and the annual Thanksgiving dinner, and our many small fellowship groups, such as the Good News Book Club, Mixed Company for Parties of One, and the First Friends Dining Group. We've also provided hospitality bags for visitors, assisted with neighborhood outreach events like Fall Fest and the annual church Christmas walk, and produced a new church photo directory, which we're continuing to update through the mobile app. Of course, during the pandemic, many of our in-person activities have been put on hold, but Bible studies and other groups continue to meet via Zoom, and outdoor activities for children, youth, and families are planned for fall. 
Neighborhood outreach will continue through special drive through events in our parking lot. We hope to see you in the coming months, whether it's virtually, outdoors, or back inside the church when we all can gather again together safely. Hello, welcome to our new rally day. This is the wave of the future, virtual. I think we have some really great things planned. I'm the director of family ministries at First Presbyterian Church, and we have got some great things planned virtually and in person. I do want to make sure that you have checked out our Facebook page. So go to Facebook, search First Presbyterian Church, and make sure that you like that page because though that is where we are going to be posting all of our virtual content um, and our website, which is firstpresworcester.org. And those two places will be really vital for all of this content that we are going to be doing in the next couple months. Speaking of content, we have great programs planned this year. They will look different. They will not all be in person, but we will meet in person where we feel we can and be safe and be outside and be masked. Those events will still happen, but a lot of our content will also be online. So you won't miss out on anything. If there's something meeting in person, we can still do something virtually. So for our children and youth, we will have breakfasts out on the lawn. We will have family walks and scavenger hunts. One is happening today at Worcester Memorial Park. Um, we'll have bonfires for the youth. We'll have walks and talks with our mentors and any of the family events. We've got one in October that's a pumpkin painting, um, one in December. Any of the events that we have that are quoted as family events are open to anybody in our church or our friends or anybody watching. We want everybody to join into this fellowship of Christ however we can. So any of these events are open and we just hope that you will feel and do what you feel is safe. Um, emails and resource bags will be sent to our children and youth. Um, I will be letting parents know when a pickup time for resource bags will be and do what you can do. I know that with school, some are virtual, some are at home, some are at school all day. Some are having to go to grandma's a few days because school is only optioned. I know our schedules are all crazy. So do what you can do, but remember that a faith formation right now is happening at home. And we wanna make sure that you have the proper resources to do that inside your homes. Um, our adult ministries, we are gonna have a lot of different Bible studies popping up here and there. Nothing necessarily scheduled, like we had Sunday mornings to Sunday school classes that might not look the same this year, but we will have some offerings of some Bible studies. So be sure to your, that you're checking your emails, that you're checking the Facebook page and the website for registrations, for um, any of the links that you might need to get onto a Bible study. There'll be some prayer groups that are happening as well, um, Girls Night Out. And speaking of our Facebook page, I will be doing on Tuesdays a story time. We've got some really great new books. I brought one here to show you. I Am Enough, a lot of them, um, dealing with the, our racial divide right now, some poverty, books about poverty and things. So on Tuesdays on our Facebook page, I will be reading a story. Um, and so watch it when you can. On Thursdays, I will be doing a meditation video. So just take the time to have a moment for yourself because we all need to work on our inner Zen as well as our engagement with our community. Um, we'll still be doing a girls night out. Um, we've got one coming up for cooking online. We're going to do one for favorite, our favorite things closer to Christmas time. Those are all going to be done virtually. Um, and so if you're interested in joining one of these groups or trying it out, this is the perfect time as you can pop in and pop out when you feel like you can. Um, so all of these things are going to be virtual. Our breakfasts and our family outings will be outdoor, weather permitting. It is Ohio, so... From one day to the next, we could have a 50 degree spike. So just make sure that you're checking those temperatures. And we are also gonna have some community events. We would be normally getting ready for our fall festival, which is a huge community engagement. We normally have between 200 and 250 people come through. And this year, we're not gonna be able to house them all inside our church, but we still are going to be able to reach our community in effective ways. Uh, so we're just gonna be doing some drive-through events. We can still reach our neighbors. We can still promote in our schools and we can still engage with our community in the same way, just looking a little bit different. So more information will be coming out when those events get closer, but we will have one for the fall, our fall festival in October, one for Advent in November, and then maybe depending on the weather, one for uh, closer to Christmas time um, in December. 
So I just really want you to know that you are still, um, we are still thinking about you and we are still planning programming that we hope you will find effective during these months. And as the days get shorter and the temperatures get colder, know that we are doing everything that we can to help you feel connected in our community. So I hope this wasn't too long and you took copious notes and um, check out our Facebook page and our website for all information on all of these events and times and how you can get involved and have a great week. Hi, I'm Mark Gooch representing the Faith and Practice Coordinating Team. The focus of our work includes mission, stewardship, social justice, environmental justice, and outreach. To achieve these purposes, we have many efforts, including direct financial support from our congregation to PCUSA mission work at all levels, and by contributing directly to local organizations such as We Care, People to People, and Habitat for Humanity is just a few examples. We also contribute to international mission work through contributions to organizations such as Presbyterian Disaster Assistance and several missionaries in Africa and Thailand. We put our work into action through projects such as serving meals at DZ at 6, maintaining a vegetable garden, and providing labor for habitat house builds. We also try to find ways to further our support in several directions by affiliating as a Matthew 25 church, an earth care congregation, and a more light congregation, among others. We recently emphasized this work with banners in the parking lot. If you have an idea or ideas related to mission or outreach, this is the team for you. In the early days of our country, uh, before the American Revolution. Presbyterian leaders from around the country gathered to begin to build the National Presbyterian Church. One of the first things they did was to determine what the church was to be and do, and they established what they call great ends of the church, and there were six of them. One of the great ends of the church was the promotion of social righteousness, what today we call social justice. So from the very beginning, this has been one of the emphases of our church's work and ministry uh, in this country. Nine of us right now are members of the social justice ministry team. Uh, we span in age from college to post, post, post retirement. Our youngest being Noah Leonard, who is a sophomore at the College of Worcester, and our oldest, Keith Brown and Gordon Schull, who have a lifetime of strong commitment to social justice, and the rest of us are in between. And there's room for lots more. So what do we do? The social justice ministry team brings each year a leader from social justice ministry in our denomination. Uh, we have had here to preach, to meet with our adult classes and members of the congregation, both the former and the present director of our social witness program in Washington and the former and present director of our United Nations office and a number of others. They have helped us to understand what is going on in the church, in the denomination, and what our ministry might look like as it develops. We have also sponsored each year uh, the Peacemaking and Global Witness Offering, formerly the Peacemaking Offering, uh, which provides an opportunity each fall for us to contribute to a very important uh, special offering in our congregation. It began in 1980 when the General Assembly adopted the Peacemaking Program, and the member, the person who um, who presented that in the General Assembly on behalf of the committee was a member of this congregation. So we've had a very long relationship with the peacemaking offering. We participate in the Bread for the World letter, write, uh, 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 letter writing campaign each year. Uh, at least once during each year, uh, we present a unit in the adult education department, some aspect of social justice ministry. And we have helped in recent years as our congregation joined and became a part of the Covenant Network and the More Light Network and just recently the Matthew 25 program. 
uh, a couple in our neighborhood, in our adjoining um, county, represents the Presbyterian and Mennonite churches together, collectively, in a special social justice ministry in South Sudan. And we've kept in touch with them, and they with us, and they have been here to be with our adult education leaders and others in the congregation. And of course, most fundamentally, we encourage members of our congregation to find their own areas of ministry and social justice in our congregation, in our community, and perhaps beyond. We meet monthly on the second Tuesday of each month at four o'clock, from four to five, one hour, and of course now on Zoom. We would love to have you, a member of our congregation, join us uh, just to listen or to participate as a member of the team. Uh, I encourage you to contact our chair, Carla Hall, or any of us who are members of this team about how to join us on the second Tuesday of any month. We would love to have you. Uh, come, see, listen, uh, participate if you would like. Thank you. First Pres Worcester has been a certified PCUSA Earth Care congregation since 2007. We participate in this by having a church garden, which is planted and tended by Keith Brown. Vegetables are put out um, for anyone to pick up in the community and leftovers are taken to People to People Ministries next door. We participate in the highway cleanup program and have adopted a section of long Route 30 and Route 250 that we clean up several times per year. We've also been promoting uh, composting, uh, alternative lawns and lawn care, plogging, reduced plastic water bottle use, and recycling of plastic bags and plastic film. We've ministered for planting more native um, flowers, trees. I want to thank you for listening and hope that you may try out one of our many projects in the future. Thank you. Hi, my name is James West, and on behalf of the Faith and Worship Coordinating Team, whose members are listed to the left of this slide, I'm pleased to tell you about some of the work that we do as a group. We assist in planning worship services throughout the year and work in active collaboration with a number of ministry teams, including recruiting liturgists, greeters, ushers, communion servers, and preparers. We work closely with our liturgical arts group, adult music, and children's music programs, and assist with um, uh, multimedia needs. In addition, we're involved in planning special services and decorating the church during different seasons of the church year. If you're interested in and serving on any of the ministry teams that are currently active in the midst of the pandemic or ones that will become active once our worship services return to normal, please contact the church office or me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Eric Gasteyer, the Director of Music and Organist here at First Pres. I'm honored to be just the latest steward in a 205 year musical history of First Church. Music has always been an important part of this congregation, and today's congregation is certainly no exception. We are a singing congregation and also a playing congregation. We have an immense quantity of musical talent in this congregation, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to be part of that. While the choir and uh, other in-person ensembles are not possible right now, we do welcome other uh, musical offerings for the service. If you should be interested in either virtually or in person participating in the service and contributing music to our Sunday worship, please get in touch with me through the office or the church website. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Rachel, Children's Music Director, and I want to share a little bit with you about our children's music programming. When we are able to meet in person, all of our kids ages preschool through 8th grade come to music time as part of their Sunday school hour each week. We have fun, we play games, we sing songs, we play instruments, and we also prepare music to share in worship. We have different groups share each month during our regular 1045 worship services, and we also feature several Sundays throughout the year that our children and youth led to showcase the talents of our young ones. We have a lot of kids who take piano lessons or are in band or in other groups outside of church, so we like to showcase all of our musical talents, not just the ones that we do together during music time on Sunday mornings. And those special Sundays happen seasonally. We have our Youth Sunday in the fall. We do an Advent service in December, a spring celebration service in the spring in May, and we also do a summer musical for those who are interested in a little something extra. Although things are looking a little different for this fall, we still plan to involve children and youth in our online services. And you can also visit our new virtual music room on our First Prez website for music activities and fun things to do at home. One of the ministries that lends so much to our worship together and also our enjoyment of our entire uh, church space, even outside of the sanctuary, is the ministry of liturgical arts. Uh, in Romans 12, Paul reminds us that God in his grace has given us many and varied gifts, and Paul instructs us to use these gifts, gifts to serve others. The banners which are displayed at the front of the sanctuary are a beautiful example of the way God, the God-given talents of many come together in a single offering of worship. A rough sketch is usually presented and the thoughts are discussed for the project and the group works together to develop the idea and bring it to fulfillment. Once the idea is clearly defined, the artistries of watercolor, fabric dyeing, sewing, quilting, and various arts and crafts are utilized. All are guided by the desire to create something spiritual, meaningful, and easily interpreted by the viewers. And so do know that anyone with a simple desire to be a part of a project and a willingness to use their hands and energies are welcome to be a part of the liturgical arts ministry. We are fortunate that within our congregation, so many individuals have been blessed with the grace of God's gifts, and we are all blessed that they have shared those gifts so beautifully with us. Hello, I am Scott Bueller. I'm chair of the Faith and Structure Committee. Faith and Structure is responsible for overseeing all maintenance, upkeep, and finance of our church buildings, grounds, and all properties under the church's care. Our stewardship lies in both preserving the historical integrity of our building while offering a comfortable facility utilizing up-to-date amenities. Some of our committee projects over the past year include the installation of new signage at both entrances to our parking lot, restoration of walls due to water damage, this past summer, we resurfaced and striped the parking lot, and recently, we received approval to begin the installation of an enhanced state-of-the-art sound and video system. Work is expected to begin this fall. Our committee consists of nine members, each serving a three-year term. We meet on the third Wednesday of each month. We are always looking for new members that have an interest and love in helping to preserve our historical building. Hello, I'm Laura Neal and I'm speaking to you on behalf of the entire resource development ministry team of First Presbyterian Church Worcester. Other current members of this group are Tom Rumbaugh, our chair, Dana Brooks, church treasurer, Sarah Baker, Stuart Miller, and David Rice. RDM was created in 2016 to provide counsel, guidance, planning, and support to the session, the treasurer, and the office administrator regarding day-to-day -day financial matters. We evaluate current revenue, expenses, and budgetary planning, as well as offer counsel, guidance, and support for both long and short-term financial matters to the coordinating teams of Faith and Nurture, Faith and Practice, Faith and Structure, and Faith and Worship. Additional tasks for our team include aiding in the construction of the annual budgets of the various ministry teams and the day-to-day -day management and oversight of the church's endowment investments. 
We also plan, coordinate, and administer the annual stewardship campaign and offer counsel and support for other fundraising campaigns in our church. Please do not hesitate to ask any of the current members if you have any questions about our duties and the work that we do to maintain the financial health of our church. Thank you. The scripture today is from Genesis chapters 50, verses 15 through 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed against you in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came in and threw themselves before him and said, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, thus saving many lives. So then do not be afraid and I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. And next from Psalm 103, verses seven through 13. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he is removed from our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Amen.
We hear in today's scripture the importance of forgiveness. As God forgives us, we must forgive one another. Our sins are our own, maybe public, maybe private, but God's forgiveness is very public and taught by Jesus again and again in the New Testament. But how are we doing in this stressful and painful time? If I were to start right now and list all the people and problems I am angry about, the people who don't wear masks in public, the neighbors who put their trash out on the wrong days, the loud motorcycles that race up and down Quinby Avenue, the computer system that knocked many schools offline last week, and those stupid, stupid squirrels that keep digging up my plants. If I ever finished, we'd still be here next Sunday. So I need the words of Jesus from Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered him, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It is obvious. My heart is not feeling forgiveness right now. But as I look around and see protesters and politicians and young adults who feel left behind and older adults who feel invisible, I know that I am not alone. In fact, there were three articles in my inbox at the same time the other day entitled, Why Are We All So Angry? The answer was fear, confusion, anxiety, and worry. But you probably knew that. These articles offered solutions. Go for a walk, read a book, get a new hobby, or bake some bread. But five months into all of this, we need another solution. We are all, it seems, very angry right now. Angry at issues, angry at people, angry at problems, at society. And if we admit it, we are angry at God. As we wait, and hope and pray for that brighter tomorrow that I promised was coming the last time I preached. You may join me in righteous anger. We have suffered, some more, some less, not all the same, but we have suffered. The Old Testament lesson tells us Jacob could forgive his brothers and the horrible things they did to him. And so we too can start anew. Besides, Anger is a heavy burden to carry. And I am reminded of the old sailing adage that sometimes we need to turn our sails to a different wind in order to change direction. Jacob must have been angry at his brother's abuse, but he was able to respond with kindness and compassion and caring when they came to him, and he was able to forgive them. The Psalms are full of messages of hope and forgiveness, of God's love and God's mercy. The text from Romans today was one that I tried to include, but it's about those who eat meat and those who do not, and those who choose one day for the Sabbath and those who choose another. And perhaps it's not very useful for us. But at the end of the liturgy was a more timely text from Romans 14, 13. Let us stop passing judgment on one another Make up your minds not to put a stumbling block in one another's way. Perhaps this is the answer. Better than all the articles of the moment, the answer comes from centuries ago. After our confession, we used to say together, may the peace of Christ be with you. And we felt hope and love for each other and the peace of Christ as we gathered. Amy featured some ways to show our passing of the peace, since we're not saying it out loud. And it seems there are many ways to say the same thing in sign language. As I looked at the videos with explanations of signing, one thing came clear to me. It isn't the words, the peace of Christ, because that's easy enough. It's the ideas that conveyed so many different ways. Some could be interpreted the blessing of Christ upon you Others, the spirit of Christ lives within you. There are many to choose from. And after more than a dozen, all with good intentions and good thoughts behind them, 
I began to read the comments, and there I found yet another group of angry people. So I stopped reading comments, and I chose for myself to share with you Christ's spirit of peace within you. Although I am quick to anger, I found that thinking this simple sign was a very easy way to calm down. When I say to myself, Christ's spirit of peace within you, I know what I want to be. And I know what I want to be when I'm with other people. I want to be the one that spreads Christ's love, not the anger of the moment. In a children's sermon seven years ago, my goal was to give the children only one thing to think about as they left this church. Prayer changes things, but sometimes prayer changes us. This thought drew me to the prayer of St. Francis, which was one of my mother's favorites, so much so that I had it engraved on the back of her headstone in her memory. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. And where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be console as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. These are ancient words. They may be over eight centuries old, but they came to great popularity during the First and Second World Wars times of immense pain and suffering all over the world. In our own country, in between the First and Second World Wars, we had the added pain of the Spanish influenza that took so many lives of young people, and then the Great Depression. I was thinking, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace as I searched for hymns today, and I had many choices. I'm going to live so God can use me anytime, Lord, anywhere. Or, when peace like a river attendeth my soul. And last, guide my feet while I run this race, because I don't want to run this race alone. But instead, I chose a hymn that was first sung in 1955 at a youth retreat high in the California mountains, where 180 youth of all ages and races and religions came together to develop an understanding of each other through God's love. When they came down the mountain at the end of one week, they brought a song that soon spread around the world with its simple message. I offer you the first line, let there be peace on earth, and also the second line, and let it begin with me. Amen.
I leave you this morning with a benediction from my childhood sung again by the Stockton Perkins family. Shalom, my peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Shalom, good friend, shalom, good friend, shalom, good friend, shalom. Good friend. shalom. Shalom, shalom.